Hi, I'm Tony Teague. And I'm Napoleon Bell. And coming up on this edition of Community Tapestry, we're going to take a look at the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life. Area high school students are creating real life rock'em sock'em robots. Summer's almost here and we're going to be previewing activities at the King Arts Complex. And then we're going to experience a new taste sensation on Cleveland Avenue. All this and more on today's Community, Community Tapestry. Tapestry. Hello and welcome to Community Tapestry. I'm Napoleon Bell. I'm the Executive Director with the City of Columbus Community Relations Commission and I'd like to welcome as always Miss Tony, Tony Teague. Teague. It's nice you to be back. Know, oh, it's great to be back. You know, I'm pumped about our about the segment that we've got coming up I here. Me too. You know, <clears throat> we are talking about the King Arts Complex. And so I'd like to welcome to our program uh, Mr. Javon Collins. Hello, hello. And he is a program director of the yes, King sir. Arts Complex. Yes, sir. So we're so happy to have you here. Mm -hmm. And you know, I am pumped and ready to hear about all the exciting things that you have going on mm -hmm. this year. So let me get in the first question because I, you know, okay. I, I hear so much. You know, and we we have been at the summer concert series, yes. and so we have enjoyed ourselves tremendously there. So that's what I'm, I want to hear about right now is mm -hmm. about the the, the uh, summer concert series. Mm -hmm. What have we got going on? What do you guys got planned for this year? This year is going to be historic. I mean, this is the fifteenth year of the Heritage Concert Series. Uh, this will be actually my seventh year, in which has grown exponentially. Uh, as you know, when we when I visited last time, we were talking about. Roy Ayers and Lonnie Liston Smith, and uh, each of those concerts garnered about 5,000 people in the area. So we're really excited. Um, you know, my first year was about 750 to 1,500 per. Uh, this year we get that every time, you know, mm -hmm. as long as there's no rain. So uh, we're looking forward to a dry Heritage Concert Series. We're kicking off our performance season during the Heritage Concert Series, which is Martin in the Community, the Art of the Economy, in which we're going back to the basics of what we do as the Martin Luther King Jr. Performing and Cultural Arts Complex and you know getting the community more engaged to what we do at the King Arts Complex because I think in 26 years you know some people have been and they've gone but we really want to you know stay you know as a rock in the arts here in Columbus Ohio and we have a lot of people across the nation that are very interested in what we do but the first concert will be um, alluding to Dr. King's last project he was working on before he was assassinated, which was the Poor People's Campaign. And we're going to do a Motown review. That'll include music from the mid, early, and late 60s. And that'll be led by um, the RSVP band from Dean Sims. Uh, he'll be leading that. And most musicians will be from Springfield, Dayton area, and from Columbus, Ohio. Now you have a you have a tendency to do things that draw the whole community mm -hmm. in. And talk about how you're able to think about who all should be there. Because uh, last year when we were there, mm -hmm. we saw people from all walks yeah. of life. Uh, we kind of get together and throw out some names and see who would be effective. But um, Ariana Adams uh, actually helped us a lot this year because it's thematic. Each week we'll have a certain theme. Like I said, with the Poor People's Movement, the first one, uh, we'll have a blues night. We'll have a Latino night, and that'll go into the Latino Festival, Festival Latino in August. Mm -hmm. We'll have a family night, gospel night. Uh, we'll have a jazz night, we'll have a young professionals night, and then we'll round it all out with our National Performance Act, which if uh, anyone was there at the King Arts Complex in March, we had a wonderful performance by Norman Connors and Tom Brown, in which it was sold out, had people out in the audience standing up. So we're going to uh, bring Norman Connors back, so anyone who was at that concert will remember that was probably one of our best concerts in quite some time. Wow. Uh, tell, tell our audience where they can get information about the about the series, mm -hmm. what the cost is, yeah. and when they should come and what they should bring. Yeah, um, www.kingartscomplex.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. You can check us out there. Uh, the Heritage Concert Series always will be free. And uh, of course, you want to bring your lawn chairs and uh, just you know be ready to have a great time. We'll have food vendors again, as we discussed earlier. And uh, we'll have a lot of information vendors as well as we're looking to get some vendors to have like more of a marketplace to offer you know patrons of the concert series an opportunity to buy jewelry, buy t-shirts and stuff like that. And we'll also be marketing what we're doing with our upcoming season because again, it's it's all about the community. As this mm -hmm. show is about unity, uh, the King Arts Complex, you know, thrives to be a part of that connection and what we do here in Columbus. Well, you know, and you talk about that, that it was, it would, um, you know, in case of rain. Yes. But you moved it inside. So we have. So rain isn't going to stop us. So I want to 
make sure that everybody knows that mm -hmm. even if it starts to sprinkle, yeah. it's still going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're just going to move it inside. Yeah. So we just got to get there. And then also, um, the, the you know, the, talk about the food because Lord knows mm -hmm. I love the food. Oh, yeah. Um, and you're going to expand that, I hear. And now yeah. you're, you're going to move that uh, yeah. um, into a central area? Mm -hmm. Well, if, you know, patrons who have been with us for the past five or so years know that we've been in our parking lot on Garfield. And uh, the, last year we was on Martin Luther King Boulevard, which was good, but we had to block off the street and mm -hmm. Coda had to reroute. And we were thinking, well, let's just go back to the basics and just give them that centralized food court. And uh, with that being said, you know, a lot of the, you know, vendors were very excited that we're going back to that format, as well as we're getting new vendors who would like to come in. As you see in Columbus, we have a great food truck, you know, group out mm -hmm. there. I mean, oh, you yeah. see them everywhere. So it's great that we have the opportunity to offer, you know, patrons of the Heritage Heritage Concert Series an opportunity to taste some great food from Columbus and you know it's being featured in the New York Times and things of that nature so uh, we're just excited to be a part of it and to do it each summer. Is it every Thursday? Every Thursday then? it'll be July 11th through August 29th this year. Okay mm -hmm. sounds good well you know King Arts Complex not only has you know the Heritage Concert yes. Series but they have so much more, so much yes. more going on especially mm -hmm. you know we often talk about on our program but, but also, you know, the mayor's focus also is, is youth. Yes. Youth in, in our mm -hmm. city. And so you've got a great program, oh, summer, yeah. summer uh, 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 program mm -hmm. for youth. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah, our annual summer camp is great. Again, it's led by our education director, Todd Camp. He's been there for three years, and it's just grown great. I mean, we've always had great leadership in our education program. But, um, you know, the parents are so engaged. They absolutely want their, their kids involved. We have parents who have children. They live in Powell. All the way in Powell, wow. coming to the King Lincoln District, Canal Winchester. I mean, they are looking towards our camp, uh, you know, among so many other options they have uh, mm -hmm. throughout the city. Experience, yeah. Like. So um, we're just excited. And, you know, at this present time, we're actually on a waiting list. We filled to capacity our amount of children that we can have for our basic summer camp. And then we have a smaller summer camp for the teenagers. And we'll do like a, um, I think it's a teenage summer trek in which they'll do college visits and things of that nature. So we're really excited. And also, with all of our program, we have that education focus. Like, if we're bringing in, um, you know, a musician or a visual artist, we make sure that they work with our children. Um, so with all of our Heritage Concert Series, um, not all of them, but some of them, those acts will work with the children during the day to give them some enrichment within the music. So we're um, really excited and the kids love it. They always cap it out with a trip to, you know, um, why, well, it's not Wyandotte Lake anymore. What's it called now? Zumbezi, Zumbezi Bay. Bay. Right, As you right. see, I'm old well, school we Columbus. <laughs> yeah. And um, they'll have their closing performance on August 7th, in which they're doing a, a, The Wiz this year. Okay. So they get the act, they get to create art, they get to dance, they have a dance camp. So uh, they're busy all throughout the day and the, and the parents really love it and we're just giving them a positive example and, you know, seeing what it's about here, you know, in Columbus and the King Lincoln District. So it's totally education, totally arts. They love it. The kids come back every year. So that's good. Yeah. Now, if you need, do you need any additional support or any additional help um, to keep the King Arts Complex running and mm -hmm. to have more people involved? Yeah, I mean, of course, you know the the grassroots, you know, our members, you know, and our volunteers. That's you know huge support. How but can of, a person become a member? Oh uh, yeah, I mean that information is on our website. As I said, uh, www.thekingartscomplex.com or actually kingartscomplex.com, and they can call us at 614-645-5464, which is also 645 King, if you didn't know. So um, <laughs> they can contact us that way. But all that information is on our website, and um, you know. But again, the great support by corporate sponsors, and of course, you know, I think Franklin County. Children's Services will be assisting us very, they assist us a lot with um, children's programming. So, but um, we just get great support. We're just, you know, blessed to be around 26 years. And, you know, I got my scholarship to go to The Ohio State University in sixth grade in the Barbara R. Nicholson Auditorium. So, I mean, it's just been a dream come true. And so mm -hmm. if people want to get involved, um, learn more about the Heritage Concerts, mm -hmm. Concert Series or the Summer Youth Programs, mm -hmm. um, what number would they call or, or the website? Yes, yeah, 614-645-KING, which is 614-645-5464, and uh, www.kingartscomplex.com. Good deal. Well, you know, that King Arts Complex is definitely bringing the unity yes. within the community. So we appreciate everything that you do in the King Arts Complex. Thank does. you. And we, we're, we're looking forward to, forward to the Heritage Concert yeah. Series. Right, thank Take you. care, you know, thank and, and, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you both. Thanks. All right.
you know what, Tony, there is no I in team, but there is an I in community. Mm -hmm. and, and that brings to mind innovation. You know, we were able to go out to, to uh, OSU to see a great team of innovators that are working with robotics in the city of Columbus, which was amazing. What you are seeing is a new trend among Central Ohio's high school students, creating and building robots. These mechanical creations will then go into competition against other robots from high schools from all over Central Ohio, and from there, possibly the state and the rest of the country. The idea for this came from a recently formed group, the Central Ohio Robotics Initiative, also known as CORI. It's a group of schools in Central Ohio that's designed to promote robotics. Why is robotics important to St. Charles and the other schools that are involved in it? Well, STEM education, as you know, is becoming very, very popular, and we as a country need to be more competitive in math and science, and robotics is one way to engage students' knowledge in engineering, science, and math, and it's an ingenious way to keep kids engaged. To build one of these robots, it takes more than just a few students. To actually have a, a good, well-rounded team, it takes about 30 to 35 students because you have groups of mechanical, uh, electrical, uh, programming, marketing. So there's so many different aspects of this team that it, it's not just building the robot. Uh, we put in a lot of hours for this. I actually signed up for a robotics class at Metro thinking, oh, that'll be interesting. Uh, build a robot in six weeks. That sounds like fun. And I had no idea what I was getting into. Though they are sending their robots to compete against other schools, the teams don't consider themselves to be in competition, but rather cooperation. The program also works on basic premises of cooperation and gracious professionalism. It's being competitive, but also helping each other. We've had a lot of chances to work with other schools around us through Cori. We've worked with St. Charles and CSG. We've partnered with other Cori teams to really help share this information and work together and compete together, but at the same time try to share this knowledge so we can all grow. Robotic leagues are spreading from school to school, not just through the efforts of teachers, but students as well. We are always trying to get other students from our school involved in first. As I said, this year we've had a large increase in students. These two brothers transferred from St. Charles to Bexley High School and brought their enthusiasm for robotics with them. Last year we were rookie all-stars and so we sort of realized when we were on the St. Charles team, what it took to, what it required to become a uh, robotics team. So when we came over to Bexley, it was kind of just natural to start up a team and we knew exactly what to do. The St. Charles team won an award for bringing robotics to younger children. We went out and held a workshop with the Boys and Girls Club for kids aged 9 to 12 to try to get them interested in robotics. We helped start the Bexley team and then we've demonstrated our robot at many events to try to pull new audiences into robotics. As you may have guessed, there are costs to construct these creations, and these leagues need sponsors. We're really low on sponsors, and we want to grow in the community, maybe find sponsors like metal manufacturers or engineers who can come down and help our team so we can actually grow farther and have a more, um, a more like advanced robot. Well, we've uh, applied for several different grants from Honda, from Tech Columbus. Uh, NASA has um, uh, rookie grants. There's a variety of different ways that we can get the money. Uh, we've done an individual uh, fundraising, uh, small level where spelling t-shirts and things like that. Hopefully get other organizations to help fund these programs because robotics is an outstanding way to engage students for STEM education. Aside from money, another means of support is mentorship. And what the great thing is having with these sponsors, it, it's lets us, it allows us to work alongside these people who do it for, for a profession and do it every day in their lives. We basically get to see what it's like and we get to learn and try to follow in their footsteps. The payoff for these contributions is the increased likelihood that Central Ohio businesses will have a technically talented workforce in the future. You can think of it as a pipeline right into their own industry that Honda or Battelle or whoever it may be that they see their employees helping the you know these students and the students say okay I want to work for such and such company and you know it's a direct line right into the into the industry. For more information about the Central Ohio Robotics Initiative you can go to their website at growrobotics.org.
With almost 13 million people in the United States battling some form of invasive cancer, chances are that in some way, shape, or form, cancer impacts you. With us today to highlight the unity in community is Rachel Silsdorf. She is here to share with us her family's journey with cancer and the event she is sharing this year in, her, in honor of her husband, Arlen. The event is Relay for Life. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks. It's good to have you. So tell us a little bit about Relay for Life. Relay for Life is an event that takes place all over the country, really all over the world in communities where people are coming together to honor those who have survived cancer, to cheer those on who are still fighting cancer, and to remember those whose lives have been claimed by cancer. As a community, we need to come together we need to heal, we need time to grieve, we need time to celebrate, and that's what Relay is all about. So when is Relay for Life taking place? The Relay for Life that I'm chairing is taking place on June 22nd and 23rd in Dublin at Dublin Scioto High School. So 22nd and 23rd, that sounds like a two-day event? It is. We go noon to noon. And the reason that we go for a 24-hour event is because cancer never sleeps. When you're fighting cancer, you don't get to take the night off just because you're tired, and you're tired all the time. Teams of folks will walk around a track, will take turns walking around a track all through the night, all through the day, because cancer never sleeps, and so neither do we. Wow, so who's been coming to the Relay for Life? You know, Relay, as, as you mentioned, Napoleon, mm -hmm. Cancer knows no bounds. Cancer doesn't discriminate by age, it doesn't discriminate by gender or socioeconomic or religion or zip code, it doesn't matter. We all get sick. And so people come from all over the place. What, what we sort of know is that our families are extended way beyond the people that we share blood with. Our families, when things are really bad, when things are really down, turn up from all over the place. We were really lucky in our cancer journey that we had so many people supporting us from all over the city. People who lived down the street from me and people who lived 40 minutes on the other side of the city made the drive to help our family when we needed it. And those are the same people that come to Relay. The fabulous thing about Relay is when you look out in the middle of the night from your tent and you're tired, the people that you see represent all the people that are in Columbus and all the people that make this such a great community. So do people stay the whole time? Do they come at noon and they noon the first day and leave at noon the next day? When, when are they there? I do. <laughs> I stay the whole time, but not everybody does. Um, a lot of the folks that come are going to be sick. There are people who are fighting cancer. It's not really realistic for them to stay the whole time. Um, the great thing about Relay for Life is that everybody can come. So. Um, in the first segment, you were talking to somebody from the King Art Center. And um, I always think about it the same way as um, Dr. King said, anyone can be great because anyone can serve. Anybody can fight cancer because everyone can relay. If you're two, if you're 102, come for five minutes, come for walk a lap, come and stay for the whole 24 hours or just for an hour or two. There's all kinds of family-friendly activities, things for the kids to do, things for older folks to do. And sometimes all of it is just too much for one person, and that's okay. How does someone get involved with this? I mean, you know, it seems like it's not just one person doing this as far as all the, all the events and different things that you have going. How, how does someone volunteer to be a part of it? We, we want volunteers. Come. Um, <laughs> You can visit um, www.relayforlife.org. If you want to come to our event, please do, backslash mm -hmm. Dublin, and you can um, contact us that way to get involved, to volunteer. Um, you can show up that day and say, hey, I'd like to help with something. There are so many ways to get involved. You know what? You can, you can just send a donation. Sometimes when we're fighting cancer or we've had a recent loss, mm -hmm. it's really hard to get out and go. I will tell you that I find the experience to be really cathartic, but sometimes it's too soon. And so just send, send a donation. I understand. Now, now speaking of the event, I, I know we have some pictures that, uh, from, the, from the previous event, mm -hmm. of last year's event, that I think we can have queued up here. And you can kind of walk us through what, what we're great. seeing uh, on those particular pictures. There we go. 
So um, we start our event. Our event starts with the survivor lunch. And following the survivor lunch, we have that first lap, which is the survivor's lap, followed by team laps. And each of the teams will walk the track as a group carrying a banner. Usually teams are built around a particular survivor mm -hmm. or sometimes a particular kind of cancer. And so what you're seeing there is actually my team um, carrying the banner for Arlen's Hope, which is the name of our team. Gosh. Now, real quick, there's something called the Victory Lap, and then there's something that you do with these. There is. There's, um, well, there, there's the Survivor, survivor Lap, is what lap. you're talking okay. about. And then um, in addition to that, we have the luminaries. Um, so as the sun goes down and it gets dark, one of the things that we do is we light up the night. Mm -hmm. So we say, help us light up the night for those who are facing cancer or those who have um, been lost to cancer. And we do that by purchasing these bags. We've got some bags that are here on the table. We want to get a shot of that. And the bags, the luminary bags, um, are dedicated to a specific person, either in memory of someone who's been lost or in honor of someone who's still fighting. And mm -hmm. you'll see them all around the track, and each bag represents the hope of one survivor, the hope of one family, the hope of one person. We know that cancer can hurt our bodies. Sometimes it can even kill us. But it can't kill hope, and it can't kill love. So we want to keep those feelings of hope and love alive. Speaking of hope and love, I think your, your desire to share this year is that of hope and love. Will you tell us briefly about that journey? Absolutely. In um, April of 2010, my 42-year-old seemingly healthy husband was complaining of pain in his leg. He was a runner. He ran half marathons. And we didn't think anything of it. We just figured, you know, he pulled a muscle or something and went on about our day. Eventually, he saw his primary care physician, had an x-ray, and they found a very rare and aggressive form of bone cancer. Eight months later, Arlen had lost his right leg at the hip. He lost most of his sense of hearing. He lost his sense of touch. He lost part of his brain. He lost part of his skull. And in December of that same year, he lost his life. While we were looking for resources, we were, it was a very aggressive kind of cancer. One in 300,000 were his odds of getting this particular disease at this age in his life. So while we were looking for resources, we came upon the American Cancer Society, which is a clearinghouse of information. It's the one place that you can go to get direct access to assistance with navigating through all of the various um, financial challenges and insurance challenges. It's a place where you can go to find clinical trials on these rare cancers. It's a place that you can go to um, get support, get information. They just have so many services to offer cancer victims, cancer families. So we came upon um, the American Cancer Site because we were desperate for information. And while we were there, Arlen read about Relay for Life. And he read about that survivor lab. And I can remember countless times sitting with him at the hospital, at the James. He would sit at the head of the bed, and I would sit at the foot of the bed, and we'd face each other, and he would talk about how great it was going to feel when he walked that victory lap. That He always called it the victory lap. <laughs> He'd say, I'm going to walk that survivor lap. I'm going to be there, and I'm going to walk it. It was never meant to be. But our children, who were 9 and 12 when we lost their dad, came to me a short time after he passed, and they said, Mom, we need to do this for daddy. We need, to, we need to walk relay and we need to do that victory lap. And I will tell you that it was one of the hardest things I've ever done, but we did it. And um, we've done it every year since, and uh, I will do it until I drop. Mm -hmm. And that'll be a long time from now. <clears throat> God willing. Most definitely. Well, you know, that's, that's an amazing story, and, and I tell you, an inspirational story. I, I, you know, I, I just, it's, it's, it's hard to, I, I understand how hard it can be, to, first of all, to, well, to, I don't know about losing your husband, but, but for the kids to lose their father. And uh, so it's so inspiring to hear, you know, that they've got to do this for dad. And, and uh, I'm sure that was uh, a tough first one. So, so you know, uh, we will be there for, for, for this, pro, for the Relay for Life. Um, 
you well, know, this we're December, excited so to, we would love to be a part of that. We're excited to have you there and excited to honor those who've been lost in your families also. I, I know that you have also had cancer losses. Yes, yes. It doesn't matter how old you are. Those are hard losses. It's hard to watch someone you love suffer. But I would remind every family, you can't ever kill hope. Cancer, it won the battle for Arlen, but it won't win this war. Ooh. There you go. There you go. Amen to that. Oh, yes. So thank you so much again. Thank for, you. For being thank here. you for having me. All right. You know, Napoleon, we just got through talking about the King Arts Complex and unity in the community. But speaking of community, I also think of the letter O. O is for overcoming. And let's focus on Brigettos. They are a grassroots organization that's doing some real good in the community. Let's take a look. We are here at Brigettos, a great restaurant, a restaurant with a great background, but making it happen here on Cleveland Avenue. And with me, I have Marlene Carson. She has been uh, on our shows before, and we said we were coming out to the community to see what's going on out here on Cleveland <laughs> Avenue and the, and the delicious, the delectables that you are making here. Marlene, I, you know, I'm so glad to be out here, but, you know, I've got to ask you, though, Bougettos. That, now, that's a different <laughs> name. What, what does that mean? All right, Bougettos, actually, bougie means candle or light in French. Okay. And so we are a candle or light in the ghetto. I like that. You know, you've got some incredible, you know, when you first walk in the door, it's just amazing, you know, when you see the murals on the walls, both on this side and, and you know, you think this is it, but there's another side there's to, another to, the side. to the restaurant. So who, who, who did all of this? Actually, um, this was done by a local artist. His name is Greg Hawkins. And um, it took him about 45 minutes to sketch this out and about six hours to actually paint it. And it is uh, his rendition of the Ernie Banks uh, Sugar Shack. Mm -hmm. Remember the good times? Yes. That's what this is, because we want you to come here and have a good time. The, the ambiance, the environment here is like, is like down home right, cooking. Right, cooking. right. So, you know, speaking of the cooking here, what's, what is your, what's the specialty? If I'm coming in off the street and I'm saying, what's the great thing to eat? What, what should I ask for? Well, the good thing about Bougetto's, when you come in for the first time, we actually let you taste everything. So we let you make that decision. My favorite is the baked chicken. It's the smothered chicken, but the brisket is good. Everything is good. So we let you make the decision. How long has Bujetto's been here? We've been here um, just a little over 17 months now. Uh -huh. 17 months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and it seems like you're expanding. We, we are. We are expanding. We're doing some things in the community. Get, we're doing something called Angel Plate. We found that um, some of the children in this area, after 2.30 when they get out of school, they're not eating. So we're doing something called Angel Plate here where we're having a, like a coupon book. Our volunteers are buying the coupon books. We donate them to the schools. The counselors can give them to the kids that are, are having troubles eating that night, and they can come here and get a meal. That is great to hear. Great to hear. Well, we look forward to hearing more about that. Thank you. Angels in the neighborhood is what I'm, what I'm seeing oh, here. Angels in the neighborhood. You know, I love it. Right, exactly. Bougetto is the place to be. Yes, it is. And the address is? 2458 Cleveland Avenue. 2458 Cleveland Avenue. Yes. We got to make sure that everybody comes to Bougetto's. You know, that wraps it up for this edition of Community Tapestry, keeping you in the community with our new Community Tapestry show. It's been a great program. We look forward to next month's program. So be sure to watch that. And also, uh, be sure to hit me up on Facebook at Nap Bell. That's N A P. B-E-L-L, -L, so we, you can tell us your show ideas, give us some feedback also, and, and what we can do for, to get out to see you in the community with your great ideas and your great things that you have going on. So have a great week and take care. <laughs>